Now when we take a look at this relationship between Fatima al Zahra, Imam Ali, Hassan and Hussein السلام, look at the bonding of this family. Bonding of that family is extremely important. The minute the child is born, he needs the love of his parents. And of course he, when I say he, I mean he and she. Okay? They need the love of the parents. They need your love. They need your time. Sometimes some parents, for whatever you know, circumstances they go through, and I'm not here to judge, believe me, I'm just here to admonish, just here to state some issues, things we learn in education. You know, a child needs love. Sometimes some parents, because of the circumstances of life, they take this child who's only a few months old or one year old and they put him in the daycare or in that nursery. Now, true, the nursery will provide him with food, it will provide him with whatever he needs, the necessities, but there is something that they will never give him. And do you know what that is? Love. Love will never be provided at the nursery. Those of you who have a child who is one year old, I don't know if you have a child one year old, two years old, do you see how sometimes they come to you and they just hug you? They come to you and they just give you a hug. They might be playing, in the middle of their play, they get up, they give you a hug, and they go back. Oh, sometimes the child might suffer from a stomach ache or some, some pain. They immediately run at you as a parent. And you provide them, you know, this comfort, you hug them, you just comfort them down, etc., etc., etc. This feeling, this bonding, this hugging, when you kiss that child, this is not just a mere hug. This is providing comfort to the child security to the child, love to the child. That's why you find when the child feels scared, what is the first thing he does? What would he do? Runs to the parent. When the child starts crying, what does he do? Runs to the parent. He wants that love, that assurance. That's why you find Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he used to hug Imam al-Hasan and Imam al-Hussein, kiss them so much, hug them, kiss them, even though they're Imams, Ma'sumeen, but he still gives them this love, this compassion. Until one day a man was looking at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I have 10 children, I never kiss any one of them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said, you know, Allah took the mercy away from your heart. You, know, you have children, provide them with love, provide them with mercy. In fact, he goes on to say, Man lahu sabi faliyatasabba lah. If you have a child, behave like a child with him. And you find even Abu Bakr narrates, he says, I was walking and I saw Hassan and Hussein riding on the back of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You know, like horsey, you know how sometimes children, they, they're riding on the back of the Prophet and the Prophet is walking on his fore, you know, on his knees. He's walking. So he tells them, he tells them, Hassan and Hussein alayhi wasalam, he says, when ni'mar al-markab, he says, ni'mar al-markab, he says, what a great ride you have, the two of them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then responds immediately and he says, wa ni'mar raqiban, and what a great riders as well. You know, just to show him the greatness of Ahlul Bayt, of Hassan and Hussein alayhi wasalam. But you see how Rasulullah, Rasulullah, plus at this time he was also the head of the Ummah, and he was not just a religious leader, a political leader, plus with all these wars that were happening, with all these problems that were happening, he still gives time to his children, to his grandchildren, to play with them, to kiss them, to hug them. All this is not just so that we say, oh, subhanAllah, the status of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein is so great. Yes, that is there. But it's also to teach us parents, this is what you need to do with your children. If I, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa am doing this, then what are you supposed to do? This is what you're supposed to do. Quran says in the example of Rasulullah is a role model. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Hasana, Uswa. You have to follow his example. But we sometimes are so busy, we don't develop this bond between us and our children. We throw them into the daycare. Again, I'm not here to judge. Wallah, please don't say the Shaykh is judging us or what. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to advise. The daycare does not provide that love. So you find that sometimes this child grows and he is missing something. He's missing that love of the mother, that love of the father. And then we sometimes are so busy with our work. You find some parents, some men probably, you know, the, the, the brothers, the fathers. They leave to work at 7 a.m. when the children are asleep. They come back at 8 p.m. when the child is also asleep. When did you spend time with this child? 
When did you sit down on the dinner table with this child? And ask him, son, how was your day today at school? What were things like today in school? And when you add the mother, if the mother is also working mother, then the same thing with her. She has to leave early in the morning. She comes back, let's say, at 5, 6 o'clock at night. She is so stressed. She has to prepare maybe some food for the children. There is no time because of her difficulty. I mean, she's a human being at the end of the day. She just cannot sit down and spend so much time with the children. The children have to do their homework. We need to spend time with the children. Talk to them. They need your love. They need your attention. They need your care. They don't need your toys. We sometimes feel guilty. So what do we do? We buy them toys. Yes, initially they'll get happy. Yay, toy, whatever, car or whatever. But eventually, what happens to the toy? Your parents know, you know. The most expensive toy you buy them, you know. Oh, buy me this toy, toy, toy. Two days later, it's thrown in the garbage. You know, they don't even look at this toy anymore. Plus, this is this is how children are. And interestingly, they say in research, children remember experiences from their childhood. They don't remember the toys. Experiences. Experiences are like, for example, the vacation that you took your children to, that camping trip that you took your children to, that week that you spent with your children and you had fun, for example, doing certain things together as a family. These are experiences. These they remember. And even you, yourself, just think yourself, think back when, you, when I was a little, what do I, do I remember the toy that my father brought me or something? Or do I remember the trip that I took with my father, that soccer game that I played with my dad? Are these the things that you remember? These are the experiences. This is what children actually remember. This is what the things they like. Okay. They want you. They don't want the toys. They don't want the money. I'm not saying money is not important. Because this is the argument some fathers say. What am I doing? You know, what, what can I do? I'm bringing them. The money is for them. Everything is for them. I understand. I understand. But we need to think as a family, what are our priorities? What are the priorities? Is the priority to drive the latest model of the vehicle, but at the expense of me having to work double jobs to pay off the payments and to live in a big house, for example, that I cannot afford, so I have to spend now more money or spend more time working and the wife has to go working or I'd rather live in a smaller budget, but rather I invest more time with my children. This is something important, brothers and sisters. Sit down and talk to your children. Even researchers, they say it's important to have that dinner time. They call it what they call dinner time. Dinner time with the children. Why? They say this is the time when you get to have a conversation with your children. You get to see how things are with your children. And then if there is something that is odd, something that is wrong, this is the time when you can pick it up. If the child says something, so describe your day for me at school today, you know. How did you go with your friends? Oh, it was okay. No. Well, what happened between you and friends? What did you guys play? Oh, this, and, then, and then they say one word. That one word will raise the alarm if you're careful. Like, oh, really? Okay, so what happened there? Well, you know, this and this and this. This person said this. What happened then? And now when you start to learn a little bit more. And that's when you catch... You start catching, who are your friends? Who are you talking to at the school? Who are you speaking with at the school? You start finding if there are any problems. This is the time when they need you. So try to the best of your ability to spend these bonding times. Spend time bonding with the family. It's extremely important to bond with them. Working 24 seven is not going to result in this bonding. I'm not saying spend the whole time with them, but spend some time at least. And that's why Imam Ali alayhi salam in Nahj al balagha says, divide your time into three. Time for ibadah, your salat, your siyam, all this ibadah coming to the mosque. That's one part of your time. Don't spend the whole time in the mosque. You know, even he says, not at the expense of your own families, for example. Come to mosque, but then there is another part for your work. You need to also go work. You have to earn a living. That's fine. But then there's also part for relaxation and things that are not haram. Especially when it's family time. You need a break as well. But spend that break with the family. Spend the break with the family. It's extremely important. That's the bonding time. 